Angiosperms, commonly known as flowering plants, are the most diverse group of plants, ranging from tiny Wolfia, which are the smallest flower-bearing plants on Earth at only two millimeters long, to the giant sequoia redwood trees that can reach heights of over 370 feet. Angiosperms include grains, grasses, flowers, fruits, and vegetables, and they can thrive in climates from tropical to arctic. Despite the vast diversity of angiosperms, members of this phylum all share the following characteristics. They all make ovules or seeds that are encased and protected by the carpal or fruit. They all carry out a unique type of fertilization known as double fertilization, in which one fertilization event produces a zygote and the other produces a triploid cell. And finally, they have flowers that bear both male and female reproductive organs. Reproduction for most, but not all, angiosperms depends on flowers, as the flower blooms and angiosperms' life cycle begins. Let's take a closer look at the flower, a structure specialized for sexual reproduction. Flowers are a combination of both sterile tissues, which include the petals and sepals, and reproductive tissues, which include the carpels and stamens. Flowers are constructed in whorls. The innermost whorl is the pistil, the female organ of a flower. The next whorl contains a stamen, which is the male, pollen-producing reproductive organ. The third whorl is the corolla, which are the petals. And finally, the outermost whorl consists of the calyx, which are the sepals. The pistil, the female organ of a flower, consists of an ovary, a style, and a stigma. The ovary is where the ovules are located. The style is the tube for delivering pollen to the ovules, and the stigma is the sticky top of the carpal to which pollen sticks. The stamen, the male organ of a flower, consists of an anther and a filament. An anther is a sac at the top of each stamen where pollen develops and the filament is the stalk of the stamen that supports the anther. Although a flower will only have one pistil, it will have multiple stamens. This gives flowers a greater opportunity for pollinators to carry pollen to other flowers for cross-pollination. The sterile parts of the flower include the petals and sepals. Although the petals play no role in producing seeds, they do attract pollinators with the color and scent. The calyx is composed of sepals and it protects the flower bud before blooming. The pedicel is the stalk that attaches the flower to the stem, much like the petiole that attaches a leaf to a branch. Now that we have looked at the structure of a flower in detail, let's take a closer look at pollination, the fertilization of an ovule, the egg cell, by pollen, the sperm cell. This can occur in two ways, by self-pollination or cross-pollination. Self-pollination occurs when pollen transfers from the anther to the stigma of the same flower, whereas cross-pollination occurs when the pollen of one flower is taken to a flower of the same species and fertilizes the egg of the second flower. Cross-pollination requires a vector or a pollinator, such as bees, wasps, or even the wind. As mentioned earlier, double fertilization is unique to angiosperms. This process involves two sperm cells, one that fertilizes the egg cell and one that fertilizes the central cell, which consists of two nuclei. Pollination of the egg forms a zygote, which becomes the plant seed. The product of the second fertilization is a triploid cell that becomes the endosperm. This is a protective coating around an angiosperm seed, and an example would be the fleshy part of a fruit, such as apples or pears. Once a seed forms, it must reach fertile soil and germinate, meaning it begins to put out a shoot. The process of spreading seeds is called dispersal, and seeds disperse by various means. The seeds of dandelions and cottonwoods, for example, are carried by the wind to a new location, but the seeds of water lilies and coconuts are usually dispersed by water movement. Frequently, animals also play a role in distributing seeds. For example, some seeds attach to animal fur or pelts and are carried away from parent plants before falling off or being rubbed off. 